I'm David Hoffman, filmmaker, and you're about to see a clip from a film I made back in 1976, Chicago, Illinois, the Prudential Building, a skyscraper. I got the job just to look at the building for one day. The assignment was go into this large office building, knock on people's doors, ask them if we could film them, and also behind the scenes, how does the building function at the same time as the people go to work and don't really notice much about the building. 1976, Chicago, Illinois, the Prudential Building, one day in the life of that building. Stand back from it, John. Admission. Stand back. John. What is it? No, you're not. Go ahead. No, no, no. A skyscraper must be tall, every inch of it tall. The force and power of altitude must be in it. It must be a proud and soaring thing, rising without a single dissenting line. Chicago architect Lewis Sullivan said that back in the 1880s, when the very idea of a skyscraper was brand new. Now there are thousands of skyscrapers, among them the Prudential Building in Chicago, a typical American office building filled with typical American office workers. Now a lot of people say that office buildings like this don't work, that office workers feel like robots, that they're frustrated by their surroundings and, as a result, that they're unproductive and inefficient. But half of our workforce is employed in buildings like these. So if the work isn't being done here, where is it being done? To find out how and why these structures house so many so successfully, we came here to the Prudential to look at business as usual. We came to see what people at work could show us about the way office buildings work. I am not still sure of what I'm going to say to her. All right, take a couple of the large ones and stick them on, on the uh, spoon there. Put a smaller, a smaller flake right in the front of that one. Yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. That's, oh. Give me a 64. All the way? Yeah, all the way. One minute. It's getting there with a little bit more uh, finessing. We might be able to get something out of this. Now come over on this end, Bill. Okay, hold it now. Don't get nervous. Hit the hole, Bill. Shake it around a little bit. Release the suction. All right, bring it down, Bill. Bring it down slow. The men's washroom. The men's washroom. Uh, your best bet is the IC hey, station. These are all locked here, right, man. Norman. Coming down. Norman, Wake up, man. Prudential security emergency phone. 22nd floor. I have an observation today. The only ones that are open in Chicago now. Marty, are... Marty, excuse me. Go up to the 22nd floor. They got a smell of smoke up there. Okay. Base to all units. Code 82 on the 22nd floor. Base to all units. Code 82 on the 22nd floor. Insurance International. Hold one moment. Yeah, sir, when it's burnt. No, come on, will you? For God's sake, you know, when you left here, the agreement was you'd pay me $100 a month over a nine-month period and settle the debt, correct? No interest. I didn't push you on it. I gave you a year and a half. Now, would you do me a favor and get off your send me some money, or I have no choice but to see your 10-4. Go ahead, 13. Where's the fire? Right in here. What do you got, okay. Bill? Straight in. Smoke. Okay, this was a drill. It was fast. Everybody uh, moved in quick and 
I think a couple more like this will get it down to a routine. Very good. Thanks, guys. Bravo 5 to Mobile 6. Six, uh, I have a 500 trap on the 18th floor tank room hot water uh, tank. I'd like to have it uh, exchanged, put in one of those new traps right away. 10 4. I'll come up right now. 10 4. That should take care of that. The bus has got to be cleaned up. Getting a little messy. Right there. Ho! Oh, good shot. Let's go. Perfect. Just like that. Let's shoot it. Oh, that's it. That's not too shabby. Okay, Stella. Yes? I'm tightening it up now. All right, one second. Now, hold on. It's a fail. Okay, we're back in business. You got something up there on uh, five? Ready? Yeah. What you've just seen is a sample of what takes place in every American office building every day. Today, structures like these are an essential part of our society. But this wasn't always the case. In fact, office buildings are a fairly new idea. Actually, we lived out the first few thousand years of recorded history without any offices at all. Back in Egypt, scribes sat out in the sun, keeping accounts on tablets of clay. It wasn't until the Middle Ages that the first true offices showed up. They were dank, cramped monastery cells where monks sat day after day, laboriously copying manuscripts. That arrangement didn't change much until the 18th century in England. Here, a new sort of office developed. Charles Dickens described it in A Christmas Carol. It was a counting house, like the one where old Scrooge himself did his business. Over the years, offices slowly improved as inventors came up with gadgets to make office work easier. Like the roll-top desk and the typewriter. Few office buildings were higher than three or four stories in those days. But eventually, Two great technological advances came together. The elevator and the steel frame. And the result was the ancestor of all modern office buildings. The home insurance building which was built in Chicago, where else? In 1885. Compared to today's giants, it wasn't much. But at the time, it was awe-inspiring. It was a skyscraper. We're all together. These buildings are not only places of business, they're also neighborhoods in which social relationships develop. Working together in these little communities, people get to know each other. Hi, Andy, how are you? I'm fine, and you? I didn't know you drank coffee. Sometimes when I'm tired in the morning. Wild night? I should say so. <laughs> <laughs> On a Monday? <laughs> so how are you doing, Linda? All these workers are linked to each other by an extraordinary device. Uh, how about Sunday? The telephone. Insurance International, Bert Spitz. Georgia, darling, I returned your call at... Some people, oh, like right. Bert Spitz, can hardly function without it. About, but I haven't got the time right now because I'm right in the middle of two other calls. That's why American business needs 36 million telephones, more than all the phones in France and England put together. A couple of dozen rows is okay. That's no problem at all. I think we've got a terrific savings bond spot for you. Yeah, we just saw it. Debbie and I are really uh, pretty excited about it. Office workers also talk with each other via another gadget, the computer. There are already two million in American offices. And by 1990, experts say, half the office workers in the United States will be using them. So today, office workers can contact other office workers anywhere in the world. And that's another reason this building works. Yet another reason? The fact that the building is a physically comfortable place to be. Temperature, light, and noise are well regulated. And in the next generation of office buildings, individual tenants will be able to tailor climate and lighting to their particular needs. To Chuck Zickus, 
and all the others at the Prudential Building, from the lowest sub-basement to the roof, who opened their doors to us and let us peer over their shoulders, and to the architect, developer, and builder who created this structure in the first place, we have one final word to say. Thanks. Now, Mike, 